This programming is sponsored by the Dan L. Duncan Comprehensive Cancer Care Center at Baylor St. Luke's Medical Center. Offering comprehensive cancer care that is compassionate, personalized, and driven by clinical research. More at stlukeshealth.org slash cancer. This is the Engines of Our Ingenuity, made possible by the friends of KUHF Houston. Today, we'll question the virtue of accuracy. The University of Houston presents this series about the machines that make our civilization run and the people whose ingenuity created them. Given a choice between an accurate map and a distorted one, most of us would choose accuracy. After all, accuracy is good, right? Well, it depends. Accuracy, we need to remember, is relative. One of the great reminders of that fact is a map that's been used around the world for nearly a century. The first Underground Railway opened in 1863. For 70 years, the map of the London Underground, or Tube, was simply superimposed over a road map. As the Tube expanded, that map grew increasingly difficult to read. The names of the stations in the center of the city were clustered together. The stations at the outskirts were so far apart that the map was unwieldy. The depiction of the lines and stations was accurate, but confusing. A young draftsman named Henry Beck worked for the London Underground Signals Office. In his spare time, Beck made a very different map. He kept in mind the things passengers wanted to know, what line to get on, where to transfer, and when to get off. That may sound obvious, but it meant there were a lot of things passengers did not need to know. When we ride a subway, we don't particularly care if the next stop is a quarter of a mile away or half a mile. It doesn't matter to us where the track curves or exactly what path it takes. On Henry Beck's map, the rail lines were color-coded and reduced to just a few simple angles. Beck submitted his design in 1931, and it was rejected. Why? What made a map that's universal today seem so wrong to the people in charge of the London Underground? For one thing, it didn't look like a railway map, or at least not the sort of railway map people were used to. It looked more like an electrical schematic, which was what inspired Beck, a kind of diagram that made a complex tangle of lines clear to the eye. For another thing, the map was inaccurate. Instead of depicting the actual distance between stations, the map spaced the names so they were easy to read. To people working on the railway, the men improving the tunnels, providing illumination, maintaining track, the map was all but useless. But so far as passengers were concerned, the map was perfectly accurate. The individual lines were correctly identified, the stations were in the correct sequence. Beck argued for his unusual-looking map, and in 1933, it was adopted. The initial print run of 700,000 copies ran out in the first month. Henry Beck's transit map is used today by transportation systems from Korea to Vienna, from Montreal to Washington, D.C., it's considered one of the most effective maps ever made. But when it was first drawn, some people were quick to say it was wrong. So the next time you're waiting for a train or bus, for that matter, the next time you ask what tomorrow's weather is going to be like, or what time it is, or how far you are from the next highway exit, think about which information and how much information you really want. Remember that accuracy is nearly always a relative term. Like Henry Beck, we need to ask, accurate how? For what purpose? I'm Peter Turchi at the University of Houston, where we're interested in the way inventive minds work. <laughs> <laughs>